Thank you, Marlene. Of course, no one here has shitty clients. We all love our clients. We never had nightmares. Huh? So um, I'm going to tell you new stories, totally new stories. Welcome, everyone. I'm glad uh, the room is, uh, has, contains more people than I expected. I can count more than 10 people, so yeah, hooray for yourself. All right. Um, how to develop a shitty client radar. Okay, first uh, a small introduction, about, a little introduction about me. Uh, my motto is don't wait until the banana starts da dancing, you gotta follow your own party. I mean, uh, I'm a guerrilla marketing coach, WordPress trainer, online marketing coach, and um, I'm here to tell you a story about a guy and broccoli. <laughs> And you probably think, what the heck? <laughs> okay, all right, we're all entrepreneurs. Who of you is an entrepreneur, business, business owner? Okay, it's the majority. Uh, you probably recognize this, you're uh, at this network event, holding uh, a cup of coffee in one hand, your flashy business cards in the other one, and you're scanning the room. Huh? You don't want to end up by yourself, you want to connect with people. Well, this is a real life event. I mean, I, this happened to me uh, in real life. I ended up in one of those network events with my flashy business cards, and I saw everyone grouping together. You know, they were all like mingling, and I was there all by myself. There was sad. And there was another sad person in the, in, in the corner of the room. He was wearing a free Tibet shirt. Not that I have anything against Tibet, but I could have seen it coming. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I introduced myself, and he had a good, uh, well, good attitude, but he smelled like broccoli. And he had something, uh, something in his teeth, I have no idea, it probably was not broccoli, but from now on I'll refer to him as Mr. Broccoli. Okay, M Mr. Broccoli and I started talking. He was clinging on to me, because he heard I was into uh, WordPress uh, web development, and he said, yeah, you're just the kind of person I need. Yeah, he was into health. What do you call it? Supplement business. And <laughs> okay, you see it coming. You see it coming. Yeah, broccoli smelling guy. Okay, we know the types. Um, I don't want to stereotype. Please forgive me. Okay, but um, he said you're the kind of person who's going to help me because I'm going to expand my business. I want to have a web shop and I want to start a community. And you are just a person to help me. And money is not an issue. And I'm like, oh, all the bells are good. Okay. It was in the time that I was still going for the, for the bucks, you know? Not for the ideal client, but good money. So Mr. Broccoli and I uh, started talking and talking and uh, felt kind of funky. <laughs> you know that feeling you get when you meet someone and it just doesn't feel right? Yeah? When your gut tells you to run for the hills and still you don't, you, because you see those you have those euro signs in your head, yeah? you're like, okay, it's gonna work out. Forget it. He's a, he's an idiot probably, but uh, I'm gonna get rich <laughs> at least this month. <laughs> All right. Um, the moment I took him on as a client, I regretted that for months. He was very pushy, very demanding. And uh, the next day he called me, you know that project, it should be finished in two weeks. Okay, and the money was an issue. <laughs> so in the end it turned out to be a, a client from hell, to be it, to call it nicely, or nicely. <laughs> um, yeah, he was calling odd hours during uh, dinner time at 11 o'clock, you know, you recognize this? Yeah, no? No? <laughs> okay, okay. But this is very, uh, it sounds very familiar. If you don't set your boundaries, these are the type of clients that uh, you attract. Ah, I mean, it's also my own fault. All right. Um, after two months of struggling with uh, the broccoli guy, I decided to take broccoli off the menu. Forget it. Steak from now on. Huh? No more broccoli. Um, all right. Anyone. Uh, does it ring a bell? Sounds familiar to you, this kind of client? Yeah? When you feel already, it's not going to work, but I'm still going to take him on. All right, time to change that. I'm going to uh, 
help you out and provide you with my two-step easy process. Sounds like Telcel, and I could probably work there. <laughs> so, but it's uh, my strategies on how to eliminate, to put it nicely, not so good customers. You don't hear me say the word shit, huh? That's, uh... <laughs> Step one. All right. You have to start detecting them from a mile away. Huh? You have to develop... They don't have it written on their forehead, but um, you got to learn how to recognize them. And step two, know your weapons, how to fight off the shitty clients, and how to fire them. All right, these are, I'm going to show you nine not so fun clients. And I want to see this. <laughs> if you recognize it, I want to see you all, yeah, nod your head. Okay, here she is, popular with all entrepreneurs, Mrs. Freebie. In Dutch, we have a hashtag called Bij de Bakker. Who knows the hashtag? Yeah, it means if we go to a bakery and um, we say, all right, baker, provide me a loaf of bread. Uh, in exchange, I can put a link to your bakery on my website. Or I can tell friends and maybe they'll visit you, you'll get a source of income out of that. That's what we call by the bucker. Usually small business owners are approached, particularly the creative uh, web design business who are just starting off, you can do this for free. It will help you build your portfolio and you will get some exposure. Can I see hands? Who recognizes this? Work for free in exchange for uh, good exposure. <laughs> well doesn't work that way. Always negotiate a fee or learn to say no thank you, which we find hard when we just start off. Okay, here's another one, very popular one. Mr. No pay, late pay, whatever, never pay, or forget to pay the bills. Um, someone who always has an excuse to not pay the bills on time. Who knows these kind of clients? Yeah, yeah. And they hurt us, because we need to pay our bills. And we need to do with our groceries. So this is um, a way to deal with this type of clients who are not very consistent in paying, um, in paying the, the invoices. Is have them pay up front. Who does that? Have clients pay up front? Yeah. Um, just mention the percentage. How much do you have to... 100%, also 100%, who else? 30, 55, why 55 and not 50? 65, okay, who doesn't? Okay, yeah, well, <laughs> you have nice pay, probably good pay, but the clients pay on time. That's right, okay. Um, how do your clients respond the first time you ask them to pay up front? No problem? No. Okay, I still see a lot of people who do get into trouble. I mean, uh, and it's no good. Okay, here is the pushy one. Do it now. You gotta do it now. Uh, this type of person shows up on your doorstep and demands to be helped now. Uh, I have an example of a person who did this to me. I was, uh, it was like two years ago, one and a half year ago. I was doing very, very, very important chores in the kitchen, like cleaning up the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, in the office. And all of a sudden, this I turned around and this guy was standing behind me, holding his laptop right in my face. <laughs> and he said, you gotta help me now. And I was wondering, how did he get in? Debbie knows, he's standing there. To get into our office, you have to get through two secure doors. So I was like flabbergasted, but nice as I always was, was. <laughs> I, uh, I said, okay, put your laptop down, we'll have a look at it. He had a problem with contact form seven. It's probably a plugin you all know, and probably all had problems with, yes. or at least your clients, they screw it up. <laughs> it's well known for that. Um, and I said, well, 
I have no time. I have a group waiting for me. In about 15 minutes, I'm starting my, my group session. Uh, can I get back to you later? And he got so angry. He turned around and you call yourself a professional? And he went out the door, infuriated. And I was like, what is this? The end? Uh -uh. Um, next day, I'm looking at Debbie. Do you still remember that he started calling the office and started harassing uh, our office assistant? And uh, he asked for uh, one of our employees. And uh, he said to this employee, can you please fix this problem? We'll do it off the books. The boss shouldn't know about it, uh, because she probably hates me. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, Samir, it's the employee in charge, he said, no, I gotta ask my boss, I can't do this. No, she hates me, please do it for me. I'll give you uh, what we call it, Zwart Geld. <laughs> um, it's off the books. Yeah, all right, um, he didn't. So, as of then, he started calling the office every five minutes. We put his name in the phone as Mr. Do Not Call, uh, Do Not Answer Phone. <laughs> Mr. A do Not Answer Phone was never answered <laughs> anymore. But this is like the kind of pushy person that you can experience in your business, very extreme, but uh, who's had an experience similar like this, that someone demanded to be helped now? I see hands, can you, do you want to share? No? Okay. Because <laughs> it's going to be on, on TV. <laughs> no. But it sounds... Uh, it, I'm not alone in this. It's not that I'm the troublemaker all the time. It's, uh, it's, we have a shared experience, probably. Okay. You've got to set clear rules and protect yourself. And mention that everything, everything has a price. And if you work odd hours, you've got to have a different fee. Who has weekend fees or weekend price? Yeah? How much extra? Uh, over four times normal. Yeah, that's good. It teaches people a lesson. I mean, they will really uh, yeah, wait until Monday. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here is Mrs. Butley. <laughs> yeah. She is what I call a true energy vampire. Mike is uh, not cooperating. Yeah. Okay, this is the kind of person. Who is into graphic design here? Or yeah? Okay. Do you work with clients one-on-one -on -one sometimes? Yeah. yeah? Do you recognize that they say, I want this one pixel up? Yeah. Uh, no? Do it back again, like it was before? No? Two pixels to the other side? Oh, forget it. Let's do it like we had it yesterday. <laughs> I didn't do that anymore. No. I had the experience. Yeah, you had a similar experience like this. It drained you. It's not why you, became, you, why you choose a creative business to be uh, confronted with this type of uh, energy suckers. Um, yeah, with this type of person, you gotta know you're in charge. You know your job, she can give you some sense of direction, but you're the one who sets the, uh, who does the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Nederlands. Yeah, die bepaalt het er gebeurt. Yeah, who determines what is happening. Okay. Okay, you're mine. <laughs> yeah, this person owns us, acts as if he or she owns you, and you gotta be available 24 seven. Um, for example, I'm sure we've all been there. Clients sending emails in the middle of the night and calling you at eight, nine o'clock. Why have you not responded? Huh? And uh, as sucker as I used to be, sometimes I would reply immediately. But now I'm like, okay, it's my agenda, and if it's very urgent, I will give it priority, and otherwise, okay, you gotta wait. Set clear boundaries, and don't be available 24 seven, I mean, and if you are, uh, like Mike said, Charge a different rate, and that makes it even work, it makes it worthwhile. Um, what I do is I hire a virtual assistant. She answers all my phones, and uh, she sends me emails with all the messages twice a day. And uh, I, I don't, I'm not available the whole day, and it gives me really, really time to do my work very well. 
Okay, Mr. So, so rude. Uh, the rudest thing that ever walked the earth. Okay, <laughs> I'm sure everyone experiences rude people in their business. Not everyone's very polite. Um, we run a training company and uh, we have a program called the Web Assistant uh, Program. Here are two uh, girls who uh, participated in it. And I, not everyone becomes a client for this program. They, you have got to do an intake either through telephone or uh, in person. And one person, uh, I met her, and she, uh, uh, I asked for the motivation. And she said, motivation? I don't care. My boss pays for it. What, I don't care what you teach me. It's for free. So I was kind of disappointed because it's not a cheap uh, training. I only want highly motivated people to participate in this. And this was not really that bad, but at that time we had a, a Muslim a, a girl, a, a Muslim girl working for our company, and she refused to shake hands with this girl. <laughs> and that drew the straw from me. So I said, okay, you've got to find another training company that will do business with you, because this is not very polite. And she said, you don't want to do business? Well, not with everyone, sorry. So you got to choose who you work with. Who is not picky on uh, eh, if someone's rude or not? Are we picky? Yes? Mm. Yeah? Okay, good. Because I, I yeah. tell him or her that being a jerk doesn't work. No walk away. Run. Highest hill. <laughs> Far away. Ah. Here we have Mr. El Cheapo. This is the kind of person that always questions the fee you ask. I mean, I have no problem with people telling me they can't afford me, but I do have a problem with people that tell me that I overcharge them and that their neighbor's kid could have done it in, in five minutes' time. <laughs> so uh, I think we all know the value of our work and don't be a sellout. Because it's easy to give in, to make the, you think you make this person happy, but it's, it's not. We're worth our price. Mr. Know It Better, that's usually a friend of El Cheapo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's always the, <laughs> yeah, telling me, uh, okay, just installing a plugin. Why does it take 15 minutes? Hmm. It, here comes the neighbor kid or the, the son again. It takes him five minutes. <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah. He questions you as an expert. And that's not healthy in a client relationship. So one of the, thing, one of the things is that I have to be clear about the number of the rounds of changes and stuff like that. Because every time a person like this will uh, open up the discussion. Do you, why do you need extra time for this? Why do you need extra time for that? Uh, and otherwise, you can have them do it alone, by themselves, in a basement, where no one will ever find them. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mrs. Talk Shit. This is a, a, a difficult one, because she will usually present herself as a very nice person who's been mistreated, by her former web designer, and you will feel sorry, <laughs> and you you want to be good, a good person, and you want to help this person out. But don't forget, once she starts talking shit about other people, you will be the subject of a shitty talk as well sometime. So be on guard. You don't want to end up as gossip material yourself. Okay, in this room. We have lots of experience with clients, good clients, shitty clients, who has a number 10 profile that they want to mention. Is there another one? Have I covered all of the... Okay. Here, shall I hand you the mic? <laughs> That's not possible. <laughs> yeah. Okay, talk loud. That's good. And how, how would you uh, teach your colleagues? It all starts with negotiating. How we speak, what we use. Mm -hmm. So now 
expectation management. Uh, what we t train ourselves in uh, uh, finding the right clients that suit us, uh, we will have less problems. And indeed, if you have a colleague who likes to work night times, there will be a, cli a client that he can match with. That's what you meant, huh? Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there any hope? Yeah. Yeah. It's what you say. If you want to solve the problem, you got to start at the beginning. And uh, one of the things, trust your gut. We don't... Uh, the gut is that squishy feeling that we have when we do something that doesn't feel right. Uh, and if your gut tells you that a potential client is... Okay, I didn't say this. <laughs> please, if it's, if it's not a good client, please trust your gut. Because shit never turns to gold. It's... Uh, yeah. If someone uh, <laughs> has mentioned otherwise, has, has seen otherwise, please tell me. Um, it would be good to do some internet stalking about potential clients. Google the client's name. Uh, often you will find uh, their uh, responses on postal social media. Um, yeah, if the tone of voice is not what you're looking for, well, maybe that's an idea to uh, stop working with this. Ask for references. I mean, we, we don't do this. It's very old school, but it still works. And uh, you've got to ask the right questions before you start working with a client. What are they really after? Are, what kind of support are they looking for? What kind of service? Are they looking for low cost? Or are they cost, fo uh, cost focused? Do they want speed? Or do they want high quality or great service? or great results. Well, I think we all want the last three. Um, and it's better to prevent to, than to be stuck with someone and to realize that a client might be a client for the first time. It might never have been in this position. So we have to educate this client. Talk about mutual expectations. Yeah, that's very... Uh, important and document them. Write an agreement in which you document how many revisions will be in this, in this project, how will we pay, what are the deadlines, and how many moments of contact do we have. Well, sometimes you get to the point that you need to fire a client, stop working together, uh, read the contract, because sometimes it's not easy to opt out. What do you do then? Um, it might be an idea to make a financial offer or uh, provide details of another provider. Not <laughs> don't just dump a client on someone uh, else. That's cruel. And apologize. It's not always their fault. And yeah, move on and learn from the experience. It's not the end of the world. How can we turn shitty clients into shiny clients? I mean, that's not rocket science either. It sounds so easy, but ch please choose, try to choose the most enjoyable customers. Yeah. And don't just say, I love my customers. You've got to prove it. And uh, the way we try to show that we care about our customers is we have a, a, a page on our website where we have, uh, what do you call it? Client experiences. We take videos of clients in their own habitat, doing whatever they like. And it's not about us. It's about giving this client the full stage. I mean, um, yeah, Chantal has experience with, with this type of video, eh? and it works very well. And it's also a way of saying thank you to the customer. Also show appreciation to customers that you really work nice with. Um, yeah, stop saying, no, I cannot do this. 
Try to help them out as much as you can. And don't argue with clients. That's, who, who does that on a regular basis? Argue with clients? It's very killing for the relationship. And happy clients are more than uh, welcome to become your ambassadors. And they will uh, um, bring in other customers. And it's very nice to be flexible towards happy customers. I mean, maybe you will give them a more, more kudos than the very stubborn. Uh, if a client is in, well, undergoing mental stress or something, show that you care. Send a postcard or maybe some flowers. Okay, use the power of referral business. A happy customer will bring on other happy customers. So maybe you can turn that into a system. And this is something not many business owners do. Ask the customers what they really want. Don't just assume, because you know best, that you know what's best for the client. And try to stay relevant after finishing a project. Don't go for the uh, short-term relationship, but build a longer relationship, and make sure you have products after you finish the project. Okay. I'm within my time. Wonderful. <laughs>